The Zoo Family Center for Global Cancer Prevention at the Harvard Chan School of Public Health is driven by the mission of increasing prevention education and research across the entire continuum of cancer prevention. And our goal is to ensure that the work we accomplish is made accessible to all populations regardless of socioeconomic standing and global location. While science has made incredible advances over the past decade, we have seen that equity and access to healthcare are still in need of much improvement. In fact, the greatest disparity in cancer deaths occur in cancers that are most preventable. Cancer prevention has one of the greatest opportunities to save lives from cancer, but we find that most people don't value prevention, and so it's very difficult to get people to understand what we're doing and how it can impact on their lives. There are so many cancers that we can prevent by using the knowledge that we have right now in our hands. Colon cancer, lung cancer, cervical cancer, liver cancer. We can uh, detect early breast cancer. We can prevent head and neck cancer, melanoma, skin cancer. There's so much knowledge that we have that we just need to use. Not all individuals need the same kind of screening at the same time. We're designing approaches that will adapt screening, early detection, and prevention strategies to the individual needs of people at risk of cancer. I think implementation strategies are really critical for adoption of early detection technologies. Uh, and that's one of the things that I think we as technology developers oftentimes miss. It's one thing to show that you have a technology that can be utilized in patients. And then it's another thing to show that that technology accurately can detect cancer at an early stage. But it's a completely different ballgame when you need to now disseminate that technology to thousands of primary care offices all around the country in order to screen at a mass population level. So implementation science really is, I think, the critical element that's needed uh, in order to take many of these discoveries from the academic research centers or even from the startup company stage uh, to the point where they're really making a major impact on uh, cancer mortality and morbidity. I think as a field, we need to do a better job at using the knowledge that we have. I don't think it's an issue of individuals not having knowledge or providers not having knowledge, but there are so many structural factors that get in the way of us putting that knowledge into place. We know, for example, how to help people quit smoking, but it's really challenging if people don't have health insurance that covers smoking cessation medications, if they have screenings that they need to go um, accomplish, but they don't have time off from work. So there are many, many structural factors that we need to really think about that would help us figure out and improve our rates of cancer prevention. Many minority groups have less access to quality medical care and have experienced discrimination that discourages them from seeking care, particularly cancer prevention and screening. We know that political, social, health, and education systems are intertwined in ways that drive the many disparities we see in cancer and in other health domains. Therefore, innovative public health approaches are needed to address and eliminate cancer disparities and to achieve equity and health outcomes writ large. Prostate cancer plays an exceedingly big role in African-American communities. On average, African-American men are diagnosed about 60% more often than the comparison group, which is white men. And we tend to die, depending on whose data you look at, somewhere in the neighborhood of about two and a half to three times more often uh, than white men. Some of the reasons are socioeconomic. In fact, I've heard someone say, with a prostate cancer diagnosis, the biology isn't going to determine your outcome as much as your zip code. So it's a matter of where you're located, uh, if you're located near a cancer center, if you have equal access to that cancer center, and if you don't have determinants that are social or otherwise that impact your ability to get and stay within a treatment protocol. We tend to skew our clinical service and our guidelines for screening more towards people at average risk and from a broad public health perspective. If we change that around to think about how we can more effectively get people that are at high risk into screening protocols that are tailored for them, 
I think we can do a better job at, uh, at addressing some of these disproportionate numbers in terms of incidence and mortality uh, in high-risk populations. We believe that healthcare rights are human rights, and we are engaged in innovative research that will level the playing field for all groups because all people deserve to lead a healthy life.